fruit fly. Hey everyone, Kelsey here and welcome back to Gal. Today, I'm doing an update video on all of Adobe Premiere Pro's software updates this fall. So if you're a big nerd like me and you like to keep up to date with all of the cool features, definitely keep watching. I will be covering all of the new updates that Adobe just released today so you can download the app or use the public beta right now to get these updates. Now these updates are what Adobe's calling improved workflows or streamlined workflow edits. So I'll just be going into these different updates, kind of doing a review of how well they work and also give some recommendations of what I think would actually improve the Premiere Pro software going forward. Now I do these update videos in the fall and in the spring each year, because usually that's when Adobe does their big software releases. Uh, but if you're looking for specific effect in-depth tutorials for audio editing, video editing, Photoshop, anything like that, you can go to my main channel page and just click on the little search icon and search for what you want to learn and more likely than not, you'll find a tutorial to get that done. And if you guys are subscribed, be sure to hit that notification bell because I want you guys to be notified when I publish new videos. And per usual, you'll find time codes below. So if you want to skip ahead to a certain section to review, definitely use those time codes. And lastly, at the end of this video, watch till the end because you may have your answer questioned. You may have your answer questioned. You may have... At the very end of the video, I do comments of the week. So I feature a comment of the week where I answer one of your questions. So watch till the end to get that answer. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first update is called Quick Export. And this is now available in the public beta. So if you download the public beta from the Adobe Creative Cloud app, you'll now see an icon in the upper right that looks like a little upload icon. And you just click on that and you can access the quick export H.264 codex. So I use this all the time because mainly I upload to social media and YouTube as H.264. H. 264 and I export it to match the source, which is just 24 frames per second in my timeline. And it's just a really fast way to export. Now, this isn't a revolution addition to Premiere Pro. It's just something that makes it easier to just simply click and then have a quick export. But of course, you can still go to file, export media, and export to all the different codecs that you need. The second update is called Scene Edit Detection. Now this is one of my favorite new updates because it's extremely useful if you're editing in a workflow where you're receiving a full edit or if you're sharing a fully exported edit with somebody else to then add to it. So what this new feature can do is it can automatically detect cuts in a fully exported edit. So let's say that you received a full video that you need to add color grading to, or let's say titles and effects. You would just drag and drop that exported video, which doesn't have any cuts in it, and you would right click on it and do scene edit detection. And from here, you can choose to add a cut point at each detected cut point. And you can also have Premiere put all of the clips into a bin. And if you like, you can also add a marker at each cut point, but in this case, we won't do that. And after you hit analyze, it will use Adobe Sensei technology to detect all of the cuts. Now, Adobe says that it's 99% accurate. And I'm guessing that 1% where it doesn't work is when the cut points have some sort of an effect going on or some sort of transition and it can't detect that point. But if it's just a clean edit, should be no problem. So once all of the cuts are made in this full edit that you received, you can then apply other adjustments like color grading or using auto reframe if you want to reframe this video to a vertical or a square format. Now I made a whole video on this new auto reframe update and you can watch it by just clicking on the card above. Overall, I think this is by far one of the coolest updates and I think it's going to be super useful to social video editors and colorists who receive a fully rendered high res video and they need to just make those cuts, process the clips and add specific color adjustments to just individual cuts in the timeline, not the entire video. 
So I have an editing intern now and I can already see that this is going to be super useful to Vanessa to be able to just go in and just quickly cut up those clips and repurpose them into vertical and square versions of my tutorials. The next update is for HDR broadcasters. Woohoo! So if you edit with Apple ProRes or Sony XAVC1 codecs, then continue watching this. If you do not edit HDR, then you can just skip this part. But if you're interested in what it has in store for you, then definitely keep watching because I think it's super interesting. So HDR in Premiere Pro is the ability to capture and display a wide range of color and light in your images. It gives you the ability to do more detailed color work and make it more real to what the actual human eye sees. So in order to actually see the HDR on your screen, you actually need a specific type of hardware. So you can get the AJA IO4K Plus device that you can hook up to a reference monitor to actually see the difference, but you can't just see it on any ordinary like laptop that says it has the HDR playback as of now. And so if you want to see that detail visually, you need to have a reference monitor, but you can still see the detail in the scopes because the Lumetri scopes actually display the true color accuracy. Now I've done a whole video on scopes and how they work. So definitely watch that because I think it's really important for you guys to understand how scopes work when it comes to color grading. So there are two main codecs supported in Premiere Pro for HDR editing. There is the Sony XAVC1 wrapped in a .mxf format, and there's also Apple Pro Res in a .mov wrapper. So those are the two codecs that are supported right now, and I hope in the future that there will be more. Right now, if you right-click on one of these clips and create a new sequence from it, what this will do is it'll automatically change the color space to the correct HLG space, which is a new color space. So if you go to the sequence settings, it now sets up the color space. You can see here that they added the REC 2100 HLG color space, and HLG stands for hybrid log gamma, and it's a type of HDR that's widely used in broadcast editing, especially in sports. You'll see that in the scopes, there's also the new color space REC 2100 HLG, but there's also the automatic option, which will automatically adjust the color space detected. And so what's really great here about this automatic uh, mixing is that let's say that you are working primarily in the REC 2100 HLG and you have a REC 709 standard clip that you just wanna drag and drop into your timeline what will happen is Premiere Pro will auto convert that into the 2100 HLG. And you can change how that is adapted by going into your project settings and changing that conversion. But right now the default is best for the broadcast standard. So this was a lot. So if you're new to HDR editing, I'm sure you're like, what the heck is going on? What is Rec 709? What is, you know, this Rec 2100? But I've included a white paper link that Adobe put together as well as just the help page. So if you want to read more about exactly how this works, you can go there below. But if you're into HDR editing and you're a broadcast editor, I'm sure that this is very exciting. So um, I share that excitement with you. So talking about color grading and light, if you're sitting and staring at a screen for a long period of time, I'm actually wearing something that I love right now. They are movement blue light filtering glasses. So movement reached out to me. They sent me a couple of these glasses and I love them. They're great. I use them in almost all of my edits because they protect my eyes against the blue light from editing. So it prevents me from getting, uh, you know, migraine headaches. It gives me better sleep. I mean, I, we probably all spend at least, I would say 10 to 12 hours in front of a screen. So it's really important to protect your eyes. And what's really cool is they have a lot of different styles to wear. So right now I'm wearing the Reveler black ones here and they're really great. They're not prescription. I don't need prescription, but they just protect the blue light so it filters it out. I also have a few other pairs. I have some that are like more in an aviator maverick style. So I've worn these a couple of times and just different designs that you can use, which is cool. So it looks pretty nice. I also have a another kind of calico style that I like to wear sometimes. So I have like four different pairs. I'll put on the other one too. This one I think is called the Hide. 
It's very similar, but it's a little bit thinner than these ones. Um, but they all filter the blue light, so they protect my eyes, and I get to have some style. So if I'm going to a cafe and I want to look cool, I'll just put them on. But they also protect as well, but they look really cool, so I like them. So Movement has hooked you guys up with 15% off these glasses. Um, use my link below to get that, and you get free shipping. So check out my link below, and thank you, Movement. Now let's move on to the last final effects, not effects, but the updates to Premiere Pro that I want to share with you. If you use VST3 audio plugins, for example, I've talked about Alex Audio Butler. It's a sound mixing AI robot that can automatically mix your sound. It's a VST plugin that must be scanned by Premiere Pro. There's also AccuSonus, which has an error bundle of like noise reduction effects. I used both of those. And essentially what happens when Premiere Pro opens up, it scans for these effects, which can affect the launch time of Premiere Pro, which we all want it to open faster. So right now with these new updates, uh, Premiere Pro will open 15 times faster on a Mac and 10 times faster on a Premiere Pro when you have these VST plugins loaded up, which I think is a great, I mean, it's just a minor little update, but I mean, if it opens faster, I'm all for it. So another performance update is better performance for multi-camera editing using the ProRes Kodak. So multi-camera editing, if you're like, what the heck is multi-camera editing? How does it work? I've never heard of that before. Well, essentially it's, if you have multiple different camera angles of the same shoot, there's a feature where you can select all those camera angles in an audio file and it will sync it all together. And then in your timeline, you can just choose the different camera angles as you edit. And I made a whole video on how you do this, but let's say that you're using ProRes clips, which are pretty big files. Now, Premiere Pro has better playback performance for those ProRes clips if you're using it. Now, I personally don't use ProRes, but if I will be using it, I'll be glad that this update is there. Again, another minor, minor, minor update, but it can make a huge difference for folks that are using a lot of ProRes clips. Overall, I'm super glad that Premiere Pro is working on performance updates. I'm all for that. And I'm really, really happy with this scene detection. I think it's going to help a lot for a lot of social video editors. But one update that I really, really want is the folders to come back into the essential graphics panel. I have tons of motion graphics templates. And right now, there's just the search field. So I have to search for that Mogurt file in the essential graphics panel. But if I can't remember the name of it, and I didn't start as a favorite, it takes a long time to have to scroll down and find it visually. So I think it would be so much better to have the search field and folders so I can organize my Mogurts by folders so I can easily find them. So that's one major thing I would love to see back inside of the Essential Graphics panel, which was there, I think in 2017. So they should bring that back. And in After Effects, if people are designing Mogurts and they're more complex and you drag them into your central graphics panel in Premiere Pro and try to use them, sometimes they're really, really slow at playback. Like they take a lot of render time to render and encode. So my hope is to have some sort of speed performance update for that. So if you guys agree with these changes that I would like to see in Premiere Pro, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment below letting me know if you want anything else included because Adobe does watch these things and they do see what we have to say. And it is important because we are the users, right? Um, so definitely do that. And now it is time for the comment of the week. Friday Nar. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing this. He wrote, hello, ma'am. Can I know your desktop configuration on which you edit videos? Please, exclamation point, exclamation point. So Friday, thank you so much for your question. And I just wanted to say that I actually made a whole video on the new editing laptop that I'm using. It's not a desktop, but it sure as hell performs as one. It's really, really fantastic. It's a Dell Precision 7550, and it's loaded up with an NVIDIA RTX 4000 graphics card, which has the new NVEC, the NVIDIA uh, video encoding, 
that is optimized in Premiere Pro. So you get super fast playback and rendering speed. It's, it's phenomenal. And I made a whole tutorial reviewing it, um, but you can get different configurations for it. I currently have the one with 500 gigabytes of internal SSD. I mainly used external drives for editing. So consider external drives, portable ones that you can use to edit with. I currently am using the SanDisk a one terabyte SSD to edit my current video editing projects from. And it has 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is great. Um, in my previous laptop, I had I only had 32 and you can definitely see a difference in performance. So don't limit yourself just to a desk. I think if you wanna be able to edit anywhere, definitely consider getting a high performance laptop. Thank you so much for the question. Leave a comment below if you want to have your question featured in a future video. If you want direct message support from me, you can join my Patreon community, patreon.com slash premier gal. And if you wanna book a one-on-one -on -one training with me, you can go to superpeer.com slash gal and you can book a personalized video chat with me where we can talk about something specific to your workflow that you need help with. So that's all for this update video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. That's it. Bye. Thank you.